What's up guys, welcome back to the Platinum Garage. On today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to remove and replace your rear timing chain cassette on your Ford 4.0 engine without using the Ford special tools so that you guys at home can do the same thing. Let's get started. Being that I'm putting this engine up for sale, I usually like to check a couple of things that go bad first, such as the rear main seal. I always replace that. And this, I wanna show you guys. So here we have our passenger side right valve cover removed. As you could see, here is our camshaft come to the back and there we go. Now, here is our rear timing chain cassette and at first glance, it might look like it's in place. But what you wanna do is you wanna check for movement on the slack side of your guide. So watch this. That little side to side is okay, but that up and down that you see there, no good. And check this out. See it rocking side to side? That means that even though it's still in place here at the upper positioning bolt, down where it meets the pivot bolt, it's broken. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is get your engine to top dead center, TDC. And now that we are not using the special tools, I'm going to show you how to make sure you're at top dead center. So if you come down here to the harmonic balancer, you have your 19 millimeter crank bolt. And what you can go ahead and do is start rotating the engine. So you always wanna rotate your engine clockwise. And now two things to look for in this case. The passenger side camshaft here, you will see that the center line in the front of that lobe will be parallel with the mating surface of the valve cover when you're at top dead center. And then if you come down to here, there's actually a mark that you line up with your crank sensor on the harmonic balancer. It will say zero with a little line. That's that one there. So I'm a little bit off and I'm gonna crank it until those two line up. So now that I have those two marks lined up and you could see that the center line of the front of the cam is parallel with the mating surface of the valve cover, that means that we are at top dead center. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to take a pair of vice grips and we are going to clamp down on the camshaft and I'll show you how. So what I do is I take my vice grips and you want the one edge completely against the valve cover surface and with it resting against the surface, we could go ahead and clamp nice and tight. That way our cam does not move. So being that this rear bolt is a reverse thread, it's actually righty loosey, lefty tighty, what we're gonna do is we are going to loosen this bolt and being that the vice grips are on this side, the cam will not be able to spin to the right. So very simply, we are going to take our 19 millimeter and remember it's reverse thread, so we turn it to the right this time and we are going to loosen this bolt and if you watch closely, look at that, just crack that loose and the cam didn't even move. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we are gonna wanna loosen our rear timing chain tensioner. Now that is a 27 millimeter. I have here this wrench, so I'm going to crack this loose. Perfect, wow, that was actually a lot looser than I thought it was gonna be. So we can crack this loose and we can start completely removing it by turning it. This is regular thread, lefty loosey. Perfect, just like that. Now keep this off to the side because we are going to be reusing it. So with our timing chain hydraulic tensioner removed, we can go ahead and finish removing this bolt. Perfect, now with our bolt removed, we keep it off to the side. We can go ahead, pop this sprocket off of the camshaft and we can go ahead and take the sprocket out from under the chain and we gotta keep our sprocket off to the side as well because we're gonna be reusing that. Okay, so with our bolt and sprocket removed, the next thing we have to do is we need a T30 torque socket and we need to loosen the upper positioning bolt and the lower pivot bolt. That's a T30. Okay, and now before I loosen the bottom one, I just wanna show you, as I said earlier in the beginning of the video, this should not come out. There you go, there you have it. As you can see, it's broken right at the bottom. That's why I always say pull the valve cover before you put your motor in, and even if it looks good, sometimes it isn't. So with my point across, now we can go ahead and we can finish our last T30 at the bottom. And with that out, we gotta keep that to the side. We'll be reusing it. We can go ahead and we can finish pulling our last piece of rear cassette out. 
there it is. So at this point in time, I'm gonna go grab my new cassette and we're gonna fish it down in. So here I have my new guide piece. I get them on eBay or Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description below. For a new piece, it usually runs you about $20. It's not that expensive. So here we have our new cassette and what we need to do now is fish it down into the cylinder head and we need to be mindful that the chain goes in between this nub and the slack portion. So, we very simply start feeding it down into the head. There we go, chain is in between the grooves. And then with a little bit of a shake, shimmy it down a little bit, a little right, a little left. We'll get it down in there, perfect, just like that. Now, we can go ahead and we can take our lower pivot bolt and what you need to do is you need to make sure that the o-ring is in good reusable condition i have a little container of o-rings of various sizes so i'm going to put a new one on so with my new o-ring on if you look in there that shiny silver piece right there that's our new guide so we just have to get our bolt in and started and we will torque that down to 89 inch pounds. Now what we need to do is we need to extract our upper positioning bolt out of the bad cassette guide. And then once we come around to our new cassette guide, you need to make sure that it slips down into the sleeve. I've seen some people before put it on the outside and that's not the correct orientation. It needs to go down into the sleeve of the cassette and I'll show you what I mean. The upper positioning bolt goes down into the sleeve and then threads into the cylinder head. And you could do the same thing for here, 89 inch pounds. Now what we can do is we can get our chain, our sprocket, get our chain onto our sprocket here and then up onto the camshaft. And then we're gonna take our cam bolt. And remember, it's lefty tighty this time. And we are going to make this just hand tight because we still need this cam gear to spin like this. What we're gonna do now is very simply reinstall our hydraulic tensioner, thread that in all the way, and you can actually see the cam spinning a little bit into the correct orientation. They want all of the slack taken up on this side. You don't want any slack on that side. And as you can see, that's perfect. So I'm going to continue putting this in all the way. And then we'll take our 27 millimeter wrench and we're gonna tighten that down nice and tight. Perfect, just like that. Now last but certainly not least, we need to go ahead and we need to tighten our cam bolt to 63 foot pounds of torque. Now you need to remember the cam and the gear, it's all friction fit. There's no little notches that line up. So you gotta get this torque correctly. Being that it is reverse thread, you need to make sure that the torque wrench you borrow or rent clicks in reverse as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my torque wrench, I'm gonna torque this down, and I like to go in steps. So I'll start at 40, go to 50, go to 60, and then I'll do my 63. Now you wanna be sure that you're holding your vice grips down because now that we're tightening it in reverse, the vice grips are gonna wanna spin up. So with one hand, firmly hold the camshaft in place, and we're going to begin tightening the cam bolt. So yeah, see, I, I feel it pulling up and that's why you gotta hold the vice grips down. There's 40 foot pounds, you hear the click. I'm gonna go to 50. There's 50. So there it is guys, it's as simple as that. We took our old cassette guide that was broken and without using the special Ford tools, we went ahead and put our new guide in so now we can get the engine in and we won't have to fear that it makes any noise down the road. It's very simple, you just need your vice grips, 19 millimeter torque wrench and your T30 star and then your 27 millimeter for your hydraulic tensioner. It's not as hard as you think. If you follow these steps directly, you'll have no problem whatsoever. Disclaimer, so I don't hear people in the comments. This way will work and it will work perfectly. But yes, 
you are supposed to use the OTC 6488 cam tools, okay? But people can't afford stuff like that. And why would you buy a kit once when you're only going to use it once? So it doesn't make sense. If you do it the way I did it, you get your new cassette guide in, you'll have no problems whatsoever. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I could help somebody out there with the same situation that I had. Thanks for watching.